It is often out of the darkest moments when new innovations begin, and the war in Israel has brought out in the open the need to seek out the tech and innovation Israel is noted for globally, as well as the need for a path to get there. It was a sunlight within all this mess that we have around us. So the current FDA approval is a result of more than a year of efforts, include efforts of our team during this war, that even that I think third of the company was in reserve duty, include myself and the rest of the management. Dr. Ziv Perriman and Professor Yael Hanin are the co-founders of Xtrodes, the first company to develop a wearable skin solution that consumers can use at home. We basically develop all kinds of skin patches that can measure the body signals, either the heart activity, the muscle activity, the eye movement and the brain, and make it accessible everywhere. At a Google startup meet, Perriman was at the center of attention when leading tech innovators and investors swarmed around him as he presented the latest health invention, which just received FDA approval. We need to see the kind of technology... Um, everything from um, from drugs and medication to software that can help people di- you know diagnose what they, what they have to hardware devices we here at Google we saw some hardware devices that uh, even attached to um, people's head to to help diagnose what some of their issues are. It is exactly this resilience in a country struggling with war that crystallized the need for an organization that will create monthly missions focusing on sectors, including women in high tech, biotech, and fintech. David Siegel is the former CEO of Meetup in the midst of this exciting company. Having just sold the company a couple of weeks ago, we're creating a 501c3 nonprofit called the Israel Tech Mission with the goal to bring, to be just like APAC brings the top political leaders to Israel. There is no organization that brings the largest, most important tech, business, and investors to Israel. We are going to be that organization. And it's incredibly exciting to me. I heard about this trip about a month ago at Shabbat dinner in Philadelphia. Um, and once I got connected, I just felt there was this nitzotz, as we say in Hebrew, this spark that went off. Um, and I was just so, I felt so help, feel so helpless in the States. Um, I'm a doer. I want to take action. And I felt like it was my duty, my responsibility to help and show to the world the resilience of Startup Nation. The second mission of leading investors and founders consisted of those who lived in Israel, many of whom had visited, but all with the common goal of making a difference. Avigail Goldglantz left Israel when she was seven years old during the Intifada and has lived in the United States since. I really think that there should be mental health, not just for soldiers, but for everyone that experienced October 7th um, and everything that they've been through. The PTSD, I can't even imagine especially for the children. One founder of a mental health company in the United States, which supports cancer patients and veterans who have PTSD, sees a need during the war. I think the biggest thing that's missing right now is tools and the ability for people to help each other. We all want to help each other and everybody is traumatized in some way, but the knowledge and the skills and the ability to do that is is lacking. And um, since there's so few limited resources in the healthcare system for us. Um, We just, we need to learn to help each other and that's what I want to do. Viv Prasad was one of the only two non-Jews on the trip. I have a strong connection with Israel through my business. I I work with a number of Israeli companies uh, and I have many, many Israeli and, and Jewish friends. I think I came away very impressed with the resilience of these companies because they're facing an existential crisis. A lot of them can't even fully work on their companies because they're being called into action. However, Vib also reflected on Israel's poor image to the world. One of the things that I noticed that Israel is not particularly good at is talking about their PR and public relations. Um, You know, I work in the software industry, and so we describe one of the challenges in software is whether you have a good product or whether you have a good go-to-market strategy. So if I had to characterize Israel from a perspective of a software executive is, Israel has a great product, right? Incredible people, very smart, very capable, very resilient. But Israel's ability to tell that story on the world stage is lacking. 
and it's not very good. One participant who is involved in artificial intelligence is concerned with the distortion of news. Well, it's a huge reminder of just how easy it is to manipulate people and to create propaganda to, for good or for bad, um, and, and countries on all sides are really able to change the narrative. And AI is just another tool in their arsenal, but probably the most powerful tool that the world has seen to date to do so. By the same token, social media has played a huge role in the current situation. I think people have to be very specific with where they get their news from. They have to be really well versed with what these agendas, what the agendas of each platform has. And honestly, the best way to understand truth from falsehood is seeing it for yourselves. Whether it was during the Intifada back then um, or now, um, this is where we belong no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening. It's war time, even more so the reason to be here. Um, and that, that's where we belong. And honestly, it's worse in America. Um, so I'd rather be here. So no place I'd rather be. The strong bond with Israel during the war that many participants expressed echoed the need for the new tech mission enterprise. My husband took off his kippah in New York City just a few weeks ago, which is mind boggling. Um, so to come here and just feel embedded in the community um, and feeling like we're doing and we're feeling and we're touching the technology and the, and the business ecosystem, um, it's, it's just a tremendous relief. This is the first time I feel like I could breathe in the last few months since October 7th. The enthusiasm of the Israeli tech mission was so strong that the leaders decided to open an organization just to bring tech wonks and business leaders to come and invest in the Jewish state. Their goal is to really learn about what is needed from both sides of the ocean, from the United States and beyond, and here in Israel. Another example that happened from the last trip is there's an a very, very large 70,000 person organization and an executive came from that trip. And he, after the trip, he then said, we are gonna now get the entire executive team for this enormous manufacturing company and they're now gonna be opening an R&D center in Israel as a result of this trip. From the Mamila Hotel in Jerusalem, Felice Friedson reporting for the Media Line.